Hi there, masters of stock market. How are you guys doing? I hope you all are doing great and welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to understand what is a ratio analysis. A financial ratio is basically a relative term. Relative term means you compare two. You compare two numbers and you bring a ratio out of it and then you try to make meaning out of it. These ratios are very very important to understand or evaluate the financial situation of a company. The values that are used in financial ratios are values that are taken from the financial statements. So these numbers come from the trading and PNL account, balance sheet, cash flow statement, working capital statement. All these values that are needed come from these financial statements. For an investor, why is it important to understand financial statements? Most important is to understand the firm very well. Before investing money into a firm or a company, the investor need to understand the company very well. The next is to understand the financial performance of the company. Yes, to see how well the company is performing financially. To check if the company is running its operation at a high risk or at a low risk. Are they taking too much debt to run the operations or not? To measure the profitability of the company. Is the company making profits or are they running into losses? It also helps the investor to understand the liquidity position of a company. Also, it helps to understand the solvency position of a company. Liquidity position is short term, how they are managing their funds and solvency is long term, how they are managing their funds. These financial ratios can be used to do a peer comparison. So similar companies can be compared using these financial ratios and then the investor can take a decision whether to invest in this company or to invest in the other company. Financial ratios also help to understand the strong points of a company. What is the competitive advantage the company has and the weak point of the companies. Now as usual there are some limitations to financial ratios too. For example when you are doing a peer comparison some companies are big some companies are small doing the same kind of business. Say like Reliance Industries they are also into oil. At the same time, Castrol company, they are also into oil. But where Reliance Industries and where Castrol Industries? So there is a huge difference. So even while doing a comparison of peer companies, you should also look at the market capitalization and the competitive advantage they have in the market. Another limitation that financial ratio have is all these numbers are coming from financial statements. Now just imagine if these financial statements are window dressed. There are some manipulation done in the numbers. There are some alteration done in the numbers. Then in that case, we are not going to get the right financial ratio. So this is also a limitation when we are reading financial statements. And there cannot be a generic financial ratio for all the industry. Each industry is different. Some are heavy equipment industries. Their ratios are different. Some are light equipment industries. Their ratios are different. Some are service related companies. Their ratios are different. So one ratio for every everybody is not the right way to look at it. So you need to understand the industry and then use its financial ratios to compare it. So let us start from understanding what is EPS, earning per share. Now EPS helps the investor to understand that how much the company is earning behind every single share. Whether they give dividend or not, that's a different story. But how much the company is able to earn for every single shareholder? That is EPS, earning per share. If the company is earning a good EPS, then surely the company will give good dividends. So that's why investors look for companies which have good EPS. So when an investor want to invest money into a company, they compare the EPSs of two, three companies. And whichever has the highest EPS, they would want to invest into those companies because uh, a higher EPS means higher growth, higher dividends. That is what the investor is looking for. That is how an investor needs to understand what an EPS is. So what is the formula for EPS? So EPS equal to net profit, that is profit available for equity shareholders divided by number of outstanding shares. Now what is PAT? PAT is profit after tax, less whatever money had to be given to the preference shareholders as a dividend. 
because that is not available for equity shareholders. Now, there is another way of finding what is the number of shares. It is market capitalization divided by the current market price. So, when you divide the market capitalization with the current market price, you will get the number of outstanding shares. So, there are multiple ways of finding out what is the number of outstanding shares. And profit after tax is available in their balance sheets and there are many websites that will show you what is the profit after tax for a company. So let us take an example, a company which has a profit after tax 11 lakh rupees and they have to pay out dividends to the preference shareholders 1 lakh rupee. Outstanding share is 10,000. So now the EPS calculation would be 11 lakhs minus 1 lakh that is 10 lakh divided by the outstanding shares which is 10,000. So the EPS is 100. From this example we will come to know that the earning per share for this company is 100 rupees. Now, whether this 100 rupees is divided into two parts as retained earnings and dividends, that's a different thing. But what is important is the investor know that this company is earning 100 rupees for every single shareholder. Like Warren Buffet says, the more you learn, the more you will earn. And I always keep saying, keep learning, keep growing, keep getting better every single day. Very, very important. So that's all for this video. Thank you. Namaskar.